Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, welcome back. We're going to uh, finish 6-5 today. Well, we're going to start 6-5 actually today. Um, we'll break it up into two parts, part one and two. Today we're going to do part one. It's actually quite easy. I believe, in my opinion, that the hardest lessons here by far were 6-4 and 6-3. Because, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, fractional work that had to be done, and this is all new to you, and, you know, you haven't been able to ask questions. So I'm sure those were pretty tough, but I believe that these are going to make things a lot, a lot easier for you. So I'm hoping <laughs> that I am right. Let's go ahead and uh, check it out. A radical expression, gentlemen, is an equation that has a variable in a radicand or a variable in uh, with a rational exponent, okay? And actually, this is this is, yeah, this is all good. Uh, if the radical has an index of two, the equation is a square root equation. We know that. In this lesson, assume that all radicals and expressions with rational exponents represent real numbers, okay? No imaginary numbers yet. We'll work with that later. So, all right, guys, let's see how we solve this. There's not much rhyme or reason to this. It's pretty much basic uh, equation skills. We're still trying to solve for that variable. We're trying to get that variable alone. And we're going to be able to use our exponent and rational exponent and radical knowledge and canceling and simplifying knowledge to go ahead and get that variable outside. So in this particular case, what we always want to do is we know that if we square a radical, we're going to eliminate that square or that radical of 2, okay, that power of 2, that square root. So what's happening is here, if I square this, I'm going to get a nasty answer. I can do it but it's going to get a nasty answer. So what I want to try to do, if at all possible, is to get my radicals alone. Whether well, that's a square root or a cube root or a fifth root. Get it alone. So let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. So I have the square root of 4x plus 1 equals 5. Now at this point, now it's easy, guys. How do I get rid of a radical? Well, we've just been practicing that. You go ahead and square it. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. And when you square a radical, it cancels out. You got 4x plus 1 equals 5 squared, which is 25. Now, why does the square root of 4x plus 1, why is it that when it's squared, it cancels? Well, if you remember from the last section we just did, 6, 4, the square root of 4x plus 1 can turn into the 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power, raised to the second power. 2 times 1 half, that's 2 over 2, that's 1. 4x plus 1 to the first power is just 4x plus 1. You don't need to go through all of that science behind it, but I wanted to make sure that you guys remembered why it was this way. So now it's simple. You just solve for x. 4x equals 24 divided by 4, and x equals 6. The one thing you do have to do, I am sorry, guys, but you do have to, you always have to check. So we got to check. Square root of 24 plus 1 is 25 minus 5. Does that equal 0? Yes, because the square root of 25 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we're golden. Okay, number 2. Again, if at all possible, I want you to get that radical all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides. If something was being multiplied to that radical, you divide it. If something was being divided uh, by that radical, or to that radical, you multiply it. You get rid of any operation that is affecting that radical outside of the radical. So I'm going to have square root of 2x minus 3 left over. That's going to equal 5. How do I get rid of that radical 2, that square root? I'm going to go ahead and square it. Those cancel. I got 2x minus 3 equals 25. Add 3 to both sides. At this point, I'm flying because this is Mickey Mouse for you guys, and I know it is. So x equals 14. Again, you got it. You got to check it, my friends. You got to. So you're going to have 3 plus the square root of 2 times 14 is 28 minus 3 is 25. Is that going to equal 8? Yeah, 3 plus 5 does equal 8. So you're golden. 
Okay, that should be pretty simple. That shouldn't be too bad so far. Let's continue a little bit more. Just like if I have it in radical format, I can cancel them out, guys, if I have the exponents in rational exponent form. To solve equations in the form of x to the m over n equals some value a, raise each side of the equation to the reciprocal of the given power, which in this case would be n over m. If either the m or n is even, then x to the m over n raised to the n over m power has to be an absolute value. If you guys remember, there was something else we did with absolute value. Whenever you take an odd number exponent out of an even index, it's got to be an absolute value. So for example, the square root of x to the 6 technically is really absolute value of x cubed, OK? Because I took an odd root, or an odd exponent, rather, out of an even index. When I take an odd exponent out of an even index, I have to put an absolute value. So here, if either the numerator or the denominator of the original base, of the original base, is even, then I'm going to have to take it out as an absolute value of x. OK. So let's go ahead and put that all to work. First of all, guys, a lot of people like to convert this into radical form. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. First, let's do it the way we should do it, the easy way. Let's go ahead and get this radical alone, because even though I have a rational exponent, it's still just a radical. That turns into a radical. So I have x plus 1 to the 2 thirds equals 4. Now, the easiest way to do this, my friends, I promise you, is to simply multiply or raise raise, not multiply, raise each side to the power reciprocal to this power. So you're going to raise, in other words, this whole thing to the 3 halves, and you're going to raise this to the 3 halves. 2 thirds times 3 halves, guess what? They cancel. So now you have x plus 1 equals, this is Mickey Mouse, this is the square root of 4 cubed, right? And 4 cubed is 64, so x plus 1 equals the square root of 64, so x plus 1 equals 8, minus 1, boom, done, easy, over, x equals 7. Now, for whatever reason, some people don't like to do that. Let me give you one second. All right, guys. So, I had said to you that we have a second way of doing this, and I'm not lying. Let's go ahead and rewrite this, but this time I'm going to do it radically. I'm not going to use my exponential fractions. I'm going to do it using radicals, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and get my radical alone. Let's convert it. So I've got cube root of x plus 1 squared. Remember that we learned last lesson, guys, that the numerator is the radical or is the exponent of the radicand, and the denominator is the index, OK? So with that in mind, what do we do here, Mr. Moore? I have a cube root. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, think about it, guys. If a square root was canceled out by raising it to the second power, then a cube root is going to be canceled out by raising everything to the third power, my friends. Why, Mr. Moore? Well, if I have the cube root of x, OK? and I raise that to the third power, what does this cube root of x really become? x to the one-third raised to the third power. Guys, what's three times one-third? That's going to be x to the one. You don't need all this science behind it, but you know me, guys. I like to explain things. So in this case, this cancels. I've got x plus one squared equals 64. So what do I do at this point? Well, at this point, check this out. I have a power of 2 here, right? Well, guys, go ahead and square both sides. When you square both sides, that 2 gets canceled out with the radical. I got x plus 1 equals 8. Subtract 1 to both sides. 
x equals 7. I do think that this is a lengthier way, but it works. And whatever works for you is what's important, whatever makes sense in your head. Let's do another one, guys. Okay, for this bad boy, I want to, again, get the radical alone. So I'm going to divide by 2 to both sides. x plus 3 to the 2 thirds equals 4. I'm going to make my life easy. I'm just going to raise everything to the 3 halves right now. So these exponents cancel. I got x plus 3 equals the square root of 64. So I got x plus 3 equals 8. Subtract 3 to both sides. x equals 5. Okay, C, a little bit more complicated, not a big deal though, okay, not a big deal at all. They gave it to us in radical form, I'm going to go ahead and transform that into rational exponents. First things first, just like a two-step equation, you undo addition, subtraction first, then you undo multiplication, division. So I'm going to subtract one to both sides, so I got three, I'm going to convert this already to a rational exponent. So this is the three-fifths, remember, numerator, denominator. And that's going to equal 24, divide by 3 to both sides, x plus 1 to the three-fifths equals 8. And now I raise everything to the five-thirds power. These cancel, got x plus 1 equals the third root of 8 to the 5th. Now, think about the easy way. You could multiply 8 to the 5th and then start breaking it down, or you can remember, wait a second, wait a second. Hold on here. 8 is the same thing as saying 2 cubed. 2 cubed raised to the 5th power, that's going to be the cube root of 2 to the 15. I'm looking for sets of 3. So 15 divided by 3, there's 5 sets of 3 here. So I got x plus 1 equals 2 to the 5th power, which is 32. So x plus 1 equals 32 minus 1. x equals 31. Okay? And of course, we do have to check these, of course. <laughs> but when you do check them, I promise that these will work. All of these solutions, even though I did not check them, I'm sorry about that, they do all work. They are all going to be real. None of these solutions are extraneous. Okay? And that is it for part one, my friends. I'm sure you will have your hands full with that. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and God bless you. Bye-bye.